the stage. Um, we're the last panel, so we have to make it entertaining <laughs> and fun. So I'm going to start with you, Surinder. Um, unlike most in the room, your core business is RCS and OTT messaging. And that's kind of a different perspective than everyone else who goes SMS, MMS, and then RCS. So set the stage for us, if you will, in terms of what does that mean when, for your customers and for you uh, building a business? Yeah. So when we started working on RCS a few years back, and that was we were part of another company called Kirusa, we kind of identified some you know, huge barriers to adoption. You know, one was fragmentation. The other was some key missing pieces. Fragmentation in terms of different carriers having you know, different strategies for RCS. You know, some choosing Google, some choosing their own platforms. You know, no, no uniformity in, in the verification and you know, onboarding process. Uh, RBM policies, billing, you know, all of that as well as lacking features as, as you know, the ability to do billing, uh, directory, discovery. And, and we said, okay, we want to basically focus on RCS and that's how we founded uh, .go with a laser vision to really enable RCS business messaging and R like working on RCS alone and really doing that for the whole ecosystem. So kind of both sides of it, you know, one is for carriers to launch RCS business messaging and for all the CPaaS players to use it to in turn offer it to their brand customers. And you know, we, we basically build you know, the partnerships and integrations and a platform and services. Uh, uh, but, but the kind of validation of that whole strategy we've seen in the last few months where we have launched RCS commercially in India you know, about you know, three months back in partnership with Vodafone Idea and Google where there's a single platform, .go's platform and services are used to reach the entire RCS base in India, about 300 million customers. And you know, we've seen you know, kind of huge traffic or success where you know, it's already the largest RCS market anywhere in the world. And within you know, three month period, we have hundreds of brands sending traffic and you know, 100 million plus you know, and kind of growing month over month. And, uh, you know, and, and it kind of, reinforces the need where having a single platform, at least for one country, if not for globally, you know, how important that is to, to really you know, kickstart uh, you know, the adoption of RCS. As I said, RCS has huge potential, but you know, not having that clarity is, is one of the things that is kind of holding back. And when it comes to clarity, and, and you brought up an interesting point about the 300 million, those are amazing numbers. Um, in North America, and generally speaking, and I'll say this in, with uh, much affection, but other than a common border um, that the two countries share, they also share the abysmally uh, lack of progress in RCS adoption. One of the reasons is, well, Apple doesn't support it anyway, so what's the point? To me, that seems to be a little bit a superficial reason. Agree, disagree with that statement? Uh it's kind of yes and no in the sense that yes, I think it, it will be a you know a huge factor in adoption in countries like U.S., Canada, U.K. that are like 60, 65 percent iPhone. But uh, I, I think for Apple to join the you know party, eventually what you need is two things: success for RCS anywhere in the world, and again you know it could be India, it could be some other markets. And in the end of it, again I believe it's going to be down to the three big carriers and. US who can really put pressure on Apple to really adopt RCS. That's a good point. And then my other point, and the reason why we put RCS and OTT in the same panel, and this is why we have so many of these uh, panelists here, because what we decided was, what as I was doing my research for this topic, it realized, I realized that first of all, yes, RCS progress isn't enough to talk by itself. Um, the inside joke, at least at the map we use, is really coming soon. Um, for RCS, but also put the context of the threat of OTT against or SMS. And is it a threat? Is it more of a collaborative uh, perspective? Um, Alexa, I know in our, in our prep calls we talked about how you're seeing certain use cases performing better over OTT apps. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think there's a variety of use cases that benefit from OTT channels, including RCS. I think one of the things we have heard today over and over and over again, especially in Canada, is 
spam is high, trust is low. And so any use case that you know, might need some trust, you know, we're talking healthcare, we're talking logistics, we're talking financials, could benefit from these OTT channels. Yes, they have really great native features, list pickers, carousels, but at its lowest common denominator, just the branding that comes with that, the verified by checkmark, to me, I think is a, is a huge benefit of some of these channels. And I, just to jump in there, I think to add to that, it makes it very easy to move from SMS into those OTTs when you don't have to redesign and really go through that, that whole design process of, well, what do, now I've got to think, what, what art do I have to bring? What you know, interaction do I have to do? Well, let me just keep it just to a text message. Right? Keep it simple to move those campaigns over and get started. And then you can start using the power, whether it's in RCS or the over-the-top channels, of all that richness that has been added to it and build that out over time once you already have the, the integration and the investment there. Yeah, and I think, TJ, you asked, is it a threat to SMS? Uh, no, I don't hope we all don't have jobs as of tomorrow. I know we all rely on SMS, but to a degree, I, I hope that it kind of kicks SMS, you know, again, it's as we've indexed so much on fraud today, and I hope that, you know, we do start to leverage some of these channels for the benefits that they have, and that it will bring SMS, it will clean up the ecosystem a little bit. Um, as a consumer myself, we just saw a bunch of examples of spam SMS in Canada. I get five to 10 a week, and I really hope that the proliferation of these channels can just help clean up SMS, and that we all still have jobs tomorrow. And I'll add to that because um, I didn't think like WhatsApp was a serious threat to SMS until an SMS 2FA didn't work for me sitting in my house in LA. And I got the message from WhatsApp and it was beautifully branded. And the consumer in me was so happy that made the professional in me wince because I was like, okay, so this is really a threat when, I, when I'm actually personally happy that I got a verified message with a green check mark on the Vice logo. Um, as our resident brand expert, Nate, what are the challenges are you seeing in terms of uh, OTT versus RCS adoption? I, I think from my perspective, um, we talked a lot earlier about simplification and trying to explain it to brands. I think that is one very important factor. I think actually the bigger factor, which is something I've actually not talked about so far today, I don't think at least, is the way that brands are choosing channels today, whether that's SMS or really anything else, is based on the ROI that they're driving. And that ROI is a function of a few different factors. Obviously, price is a big factor. There's other factors like engagement and what kind of experience do you have on the other end, which is where a lot of the interest in OTT channels come from the brands because they can do things that are more creative, whether it's the simple factor of being verified, whether it's cool things like you know, being able to uh, add carousels and stuff like that. But also, you know, in some countries that we look at, like, is it just about the reach and the number of people that you're getting, and what is the engagement with that channel? And I think there's a third piece to ROI, which is a little bit hard to quantify, which is what I'll call like the fluff factor, which is what does the brand think of the channel itself? And I think, in addition to the simplification, with the problem that we've had right now is that, at least in the markets that we operate in, we haven't been able to prove that ROI. That also makes it comfortable for us as attentive to go try to solve that simplification factor. And so I think as costs change over time, there's going to be certain markets where it's more efficient because of either the cost itself or the reach that those markets have. And I think the reality of the fact is today, like brands aren't deciding based on SMS or WhatsApp or anything like that. They're like, where can I get the most value? On, on, on that, isn't reach one of the big factors? And aren't we really talking about whether or not Android users are a big enough segment for the brands to want a rich communication with them. And like, so to me, the current question earlier, yes, I'd like Apple to participate, but I don't really care. I think, Apple, I think Android is big enough of a segment, and I think it's, though my optimism is waning, <laughs> I won't lie, uh, compared to 18 months ago, I do think it's the best hope we have to be able to provide a fully, in, a, a better enriched and engaged service, and MMS will, bridge some of that, but I don't think it will take us all the way there. So I would rather focus on removing the barriers and remaining hopeful. Well, and, and I do think that is one of the things that, that uh, enterprises look to us as CPaaS providers and as, as people in the industry to make it easy for me. I don't want them to understand the differences in the technology and all of the back and forth. I want to talk to my customer. Will you please make that easy for me? And that's why they come to us instead of saying, well, I can, you know, I can just go get in, you know, 
uh, a buying from a carrier and do it myself, or I can just go to WhatsApp and use their API. You know, they come in the middle and say, can you help me solve this problem of the different audiences, and I'm just gonna send it to you, and you please you know, uh, translate it into all of the right forms, and then give me all the information back cleanly, uh, and help me succeed in those. So solve the reach problem for me, because I really don't care. And, and that kind of leads to you know the opportunity for two kind of omni-channel experiences. One is auto enrichment, where you're just trying to send an SMS, and you know, automatically enrich it and send it over RCS, so you get the branded message with the you know branding. And then when you're trying to send over SMS, you know you have a fallback to MMS or SMS or maybe even WhatsApp, right? And and again, you'll you'll, you'll have a combination of these factors and like in India where WhatsApp is very popular, WhatsApp Business API, even there we've seen actually a lot of success with RCS because the pricing today is attractive and some of the rich elements are you know better uh, like with the carousal than, 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 than WhatsApp. So a lot of brands are saying, okay, I want to do you know RCS messages first option, but I want to have that larger reach, give me the fallback to WhatsApp. So I think having some of these capabilities can address the reach problem. So even with the limited reach, which we know is growing, you know, we, we, we can see success. Yeah. I think the thing that I would add to that is, in the short term, at least, I think the pricing has to subsidize the reach. Because what you need to do is you have to create that hook, which is, like you said before, if you want them to start sending their SMS through RCS, it has to have parity to start. Otherwise, that's a non-starter for them because it affects that ROI equation. And I think, you know, on the like the rich media side, whether it's MMS, whether it's RCS, whether it's WhatsApp or anything else, they're going to compare it against MMS. So I think as we look at expanding MMS in Canada that we talked about earlier today, understanding those pricing changes and what the value that you're driving on each, and ultimately like, what do we want the end result to be? Because prices, from a brand perspective, price is going to be the driving factor initially. So if you start at some level of parity, of course you can increase it over time as brands see that value. But you have to get them hooked on it first. You have to give them that starting point. So would you say pricing is perhaps one of the reasons why SMS and MMS in both geographies continues to perform better than OTT? Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. I, I think even uh, the, there is all research done and available, multiple companies doing that. The US and Canada are one of the, f two of the fewest few markets out there, obviously Meta is watching this just as one example of OTT, right? They've done some adjustments to specific use cases, 2FA, OTP, to really, you know, in countries where it makes sense, I think they might succeed. Uh, in other countries, they're, you know, they're using their dollar muscle, uh, advertising dollars. If you're in the US, I don't know here in Canada, but in the US, all those silly commercials with the pigeons and you know, SMS is insecure and people are reading your messages, you know, it goes only so far. So definitely the commercials play a big role in that. And I'm actually reflecting on the title of the, the, the panel, right? Friends or foes. I think it depends who you ask here. If you ask Ryan, I, I don't think you put RCS and OTC on the same bucket. I think you feel RCS is friend and OTC is foe. Uh, for a CPaaS player, you know, they can both be friends. Once you enable the channel, it's all software based, right? You build fallback, you build a unified API, you do exactly what he said, right? You simplify for the brand. So this guy can send a message and if I want to receive RCS, so be it. If I want to receive good old SMS, works well, the use case is suited for that, then that's how the message is going to go. And you know, it's cheaper for the brand behind them. If they don't care about sophistication, you know, the use case will drive that, I think, ultimately, right? If you're doing a button, you can almost do a button on MMS. You can definitely do an RCS. You can definitely do in many of the OTTs. You can do, you know, let's not forget Apple penetration. It, it's an OTT as well at the end of the day, right? A different set of circumstances there, but I think that plays a I big think, role. I think as we get to the richer experiences, though, that ease of switching from one to another and having to redesign those experiences will become more of a bar, uh, a barrier there for brands to do. Oh, I built, built this great RCS experience versus I built this you know, great Apple Messages for Business experience. Well, you know, while the functionality looks very similar, a list picker on Apple is very different than a carousel list, right? And you have to redesign those, and, and they're close, 
but not necessarily exact and perfect. And so I think that barrier, that bar goes up the more we get there. And so I think whoever gets that, that reach first and gets embedded um, you know, is at a real advantage there because brands aren't going to want to do this time after time after time. And when you go to the least common denominator, right, we can all solve for it, but it lowers the bar. And, and you know, we've got some brands who I've got to have it perfect in each experience I do. And you know, we've all worked with Apple in the past. Apple wants it perfect on there, right? Before a brand can launch, they've got to go through the Apple review yep. process because they're wanting to make sure it's an Apple-like experience. And so I think there are going to be some differences that evolve over time. And so there is advantage for having the, I'll call it the ubiquitous reach, first in any of those markets because you know, the cost is sunk. Okay, it's, it's working already. Why would I change it? How am I going to get 10x better by doing the next incarnation? And so I think that's, that's where the opportunity still lies. You know, it's, it's wrapped up in some markets, right? We've seen, you know, Line, you know, has, you know, has Japan. We see, you know, South America has a lot of WhatsApp already. How do we get RCS in there? You know, there's a couple other markets still in play. U.S., Canada, still very much in play. Okay, how do we get to a winner, a first mover there that has the, the default position uh, in consumers' minds and in enterprises' minds? Yeah. Well, so I reflect on the title, and as, I can't say to other markets, but in North America as an operator, my question for Friend or Foe, unfortunately, has to be Google. Google gets in its own way. I have been trying to negotiate an RBM agreement with them for a very long time. And the business model has changed three times. And I think they were close, but I've thought that before. And the, the, the question I've asked them most recently is, are you a platform provider? Are you an aggregator? Or are you trying to sell devices? Um, you can't do all of it at the same time. And, and I think they get that at some level, but it, I mean, if we, and really, we, they come back to us and say, what's your barrier to adoption? My answer right now is you. And I wish they were here to hear it, because I would say it still. <laughs> I was about to say that, because they <laughs> apparently last year declared RBM is open for business in Canada, and mm. apparently one of the questions I got back in my research was, well, they haven't seen Canada market adoption as much as they'd like to see. Well, it's open for P2P, but trying to commercialize A2P has been difficult. Um, and I mean, they're a behemoth. I'm, a, I'm not a small company either. So we have two elephants, one smaller than the other, trying to dance. And it's, it's, we need to sort that out if we're going to ever get adoption through, because um, we can't get, you're not going to be able to deliver our CS until I'm ready to deliver it. <laughs> so um, to me, that's the critical path. Is there optimism, though? We will, speaking of timelines, this is how we started the earlier in the day. <laughs> that in the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months? I mean, yes. I actually think it's closer than that. Um, I was hoping to be able to make it an announcement here, but we, we aren't able to do that. So I, th I think three months away. But um, it really comes down to Google making some choices. What's, what's the priority? So you heard, you heard it here, guys. <laughs> we almost got a scoop. We almost got an inside scoop. Um, speaking about RCS was OTT. <clears throat> Specifically to onboarding, I'm, this is a panel-wide question. What was some things that WhatsApp, Viber, or Signal was, were doing that we could learn from, from an MMS, SMS perspective? So one, one of the things that WhatsApp does is that, you know, as a brand, you know, you get one approval, one verification, and then you're, you can launch it globally. I think that's that's a huge benefit, you know, and you know, and, and again, you know, the prices I said there is a, a deterministic. I know there's a predictability. I know what the pricing is going to be. Whereas with RCS, it's like, okay, I have to figure out, you know, hey, two out of these three carriers have launched, the third doesn't want to join in. You know, they have a different pricing model. One has conversation with 24 hours, the other has after the fifth mm -hmm. message. So we've seen some of these things. I think we, we've seen the world converge in several of the markets in, in Europe. I think the carriers are coming together. Uh, there's several of the carriers who said, okay, we'll offer basic message at the same price as SMS in some cases, even at a discount. Uh, the other thing from a pricing perspective, one of the things that we've seen is where, you know, you go to Google and it's like, you know, Google doesn't charge, it's kind of free. It's almost like a a disincentive for launch because you know how does a CPAS set a price for it? So I mean that's what we've seen in India. You know the, the RBM service that has been launched has a, has a rate card, and that has actually helped grow because brands know okay this is the price I'm going to pay, and it's not like today is zero and suddenly it will I don't know where it will go to. So as I said, you know having a uniform rate card, uniform policies, you know those are the things that we've seen Meta do very well, and that's what. 
you know, RCAs can learn uh, from it. On the cost piece, on at that article that was mentioned this morning about the ninth annual trust report, they said that the two biggest barriers to entry to new technology are cost and knowledge. I think we're all fairly poised in this room to try and solve both of those. Um, given that it is the last panel of the day, I wonder if I can throw a question out to the audience because I think you know you're all experts in this as well. Has anybody here received, an, let's call it an OTT channel? We're probably talking a little bit more about WhatsApp or RCS. Has anyone received a message on their device? I know you mentioned you've had one. Okay, I see one. Okay. Okay, a couple of hands. I guess we, we still have a ways to go then. Thank you. or south of the border, yeah. Uh, yeah, the same way, right? You go to Brazil, the penetration, or anywhere in South America, they have the WhatsApp logo on the cars, on, on the buildings, on the restaurants. They expect you to call or ideally text them. You book an experience entirely through that uh, channel. Uh, you know, as far as US and Canada, I think we are way, way, way out there. My crystal ball is broken, <laughs> is the caveat. So you were optimist. Uh, and, and I like the optimism. I, I, I love for RCS especially to take off sooner rather than later. There is a few things that were discussed today. Branded messaging, that's easy, right? It's right there with RCS. So long as all your friends on the other carriers can support in a similar way, then you got it. Uh, OTT is a different story, right? It's a lot easier the, the case he gave for verification. If it's my platform, it's my rules. Right? I don't have to ask the opinion of Ryan. I don't have to ask the opinion of Nate. It's a lot easier. Uh, we talked about fragmentation a million times today. Uh, yeah, it's kind of out there. Right? We, we have to all deal with that and work through it. Not ideal, but. So I will let you have the final word then <laughs> before we open up our questions. Well, so if some of you, many, many of you were in uh, Las Vegas last year, there was an MEF event. Remember Carlos that at the time was at Mavenier? He had a shirt said, just do it, mm. right? Uh, he left Mavenier, RCS is still, you know, we're discussing, hoping that, uh, I think that word hope, hope is not a good strategy, right? Uh, not doing anything is not a good solution either. The, the cost of not doing anything uh, is probably too much for any of us to, to afford. Uh, would be nice if we, can reach more consensus. We talked about that in MMS earlier, both commercially and from a technology perspective. We can control the OTTs. They'll do whatever they'll do, but RCS is a telco channel. It's incumbent on us to, to make it happen. But I was at Nokia 15 years ago and we were selling RCS. You know, obviously it has come leaps and bounds since then, but it's still we're in this catch 22 type of uh, thing. So if I had to live my words of wisdom is, you know, let's stop hoping, let's start doing. I don't have a Carlos shirt with just do it, but that, that's the message. Hi, one last question for me today. Um, so Ryan, I'm, I have all the faith in the world that you can get a deal done and the rest of the carriers are in the room, but and this is probably a question for, for Nate. If we can get deals done and, and Google can be here, it, don't we also have a problem of the onboarding experience? And if we could only reach 30% or 35% of the marketplace, doesn't it fundamentally mean that the onboarding experience has to be very frictionless for brands to adopt it? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a Canada-focused lens to answering this question because I think there's actually a unique opportunity in Canada. Mm -hmm. In Canada, one of the biggest things that RCS can help drive is MMS adoption that is not existent today. So for brand use cases that rely on MMS and have value in that channel, they're not really able to use it today and like it's coming available shortly. So there's a window here before MMS kind of gets the ball rolling and becomes a snowball effect where the value of RCS and the use case that it drives can be potentially unique. And I'll go back to what I said before, if you can make it advantageous from a cost perspective, 
brands are going to jump on it. And, and even more so than brands, folks like Attenev are going to jump on it because at the end of the day, if we can help drive that ROI, we're going to have stickier customers and better use cases. And then the interesting thing that that allows us to do is go back to our US brands and say, look, we know you can only get X percentage of this volume, but look at this experience that we were able to enable in Canada. Right now, there's no driving force for us to go do that. So if you create the driving force to us to go do that, it creates that same snowball effect potential for RCS. Shannon? So uh, in my experience working with some of the world's largest brands, they're, <clears throat> they're essentially looking at messaging as a commoditized channel, right? And so they're saying, hey, I want to get the message through whatever channel is going to be the cheapest and get me the highest engagement rate. So it seems like we've got a lot of work to cross the chasm to really get OTTs to be past this phase of experimental. And we've talked about cost, but that's a bit outside of our control. We've talked about potential innovations that RCS can offer that other channels can't. I mean, what would be like the tagline of how do we cross the chasm and make this less experimental and make this something that people, brands want to adopt? I, I mean, I can take that one too. I think I'm internally trying to make every case possible for it, both from a business perspective, from a use case perspective, from an engagement perspective. I think that we need to all work together on creating that incentive that allows people to, to jump on it quickly. And I think it's, it's, it's ultimately going to be our job to be able to create those use cases in a way that we make it easy out of the gate. And so for folks like Attentive, you know, that's create a business case for us that we can go drive with and like be, be the advocates in the room on it because the brands aren't going to come to us. Like I was saying before on previous panels, they don't understand the industry. They don't understand the trade-offs. So they need to be able to see a tangible use case or a tangible example first. I, I think there are some uh, cases out there, and I look at um, uh, places where the OTT channels or where messaging can replace other channels, especially on an inbound. And I look at where you know, Google Business Messaging replace, or adding into Maps, being able to replace the call button. Well, okay, shifting that and shifting that cost materially from having to, to make a call to being able to move it to messaging is one of those places where brands would see enough of a return or enough of a value to say, oh, I'm going to invest in this and try to do that broadly because it's going to shift their costs really materially. I think the, the challenge we've got with a lot of the other channels and with RCS, discoverability, as we talked about before. SMS has the same problem, right? You know, how do I, I get people to plaster the walls of their stores with, you know, with, you know, hit the short code or opt in so that we have the rights to send the messages to them? Um, you know, I think there's the same discoverability barriers that we need to solve so that, you know, brands can get their brand out in more ways and then start using the channel, using messaging to interact with their customers. I mean, I would say that the chasm is not as big as we think. I mean, I can't speak to the onboarding experience. I, I, and for the caveat, before I'm held accountable, I'm talking about the three months of my own window. I know this more. So, but, but what I would say is that uh, every Android user has the app already enabled on their phone. Every Android user. And uh, if, we, if we do penetration strategy, like I, 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 don't, I, I won't charge, I don't care about charging extra for RCS in the beginning. And that will probably get me in trouble. But the point is, at least for some period of time, the, if you want them to be able to stay in that app, if you want them to stay using that phone number, it's not about the money. It's about enriching the experience. So I think we have an opportunity to keep them in the app. I think we have an opportunity to make it attractive to the brand to, to do so if we can solve the ad adoption and the Google problem. I think you're right. I think brands are looking at really what, what, what's my return for my you know, money that I'm spending. And one of the things that you know, I can talk about, you know, the launch in, in India is that we've seen you know, key metrics such as you know, read rates, click-through rates, and response rates being on RCS being very comparable to that on WhatsApp. And at this point, it is you know, RCS is significantly cheaper you know, in that market uh, compared to WhatsApp. So it is, it is, it has been, at, you know, it is quite attractive. And so that's why we're seeing growth in the adoption among brands, even with the lower overall adoption compared to what's, or reach compared to WhatsApp. The additive data. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it ever needs to be entirely ubiquitous. The point, and, and it's up to the customer, it's their channel preference. Today, yes, SMS is ubiquitous, but that doesn't mean that every single person wants to receive all their messages via SMS. And, Yes, we are a small country, but you know there's still seven million customers or so that are RCS capable. I think on that article they showed today that 40% of Canadians have WhatsApp. 
Yes, it's not 100%, but those are still some pretty powerful statistics and that's powerful reach. And just being able to upgrade and as Brian mentioned, just give that seamless upgrade experience to even if it's you know 20 or 40% of our customers, I think that could be a big win for all of us, but also to the end customer. about earlier, the audience data, yeah. the engagement data, but you don't have an SMS. I, I don't really know what you have on, on WhatsApp, but that's marketable. And um, it doesn't exist today in the channel, so I, I think we should double down on that. Another advantage that RCS <laughs> has over OTT channels is the OTP use case, because you know, uh, you know, if you look at OTT channels that is WhatsApp, you know, your service is not tied to the SIM. I can activate WhatsApp and take the SIM out. And so it's not really a secure channel from, from an OTP perspective. So among the rich channels, you know, RCS is the one which is tied to the SIM. So it makes it you know, a richer experience for OTP use cases. RCS is, is a perfect you know, solution. It has an edge over any OTT solution. That's a, that's a great note on which to end. <laughs> uh, we are out of time, but I do feel very optimistic. Uh, I feel hopeful, but I'm also convinced that hope is not a strategy, and we have in this room enough intellectual horsepower to solve the problem and, and stick it to the OTT guys. No, I didn't say that. Uh, uh, it's but, recorded. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, panel, for a great, a great session, and um, they'll be around for talking more. Thanks. Thanks.